Good morning, everybody. We're here for another live morning devotion. And excited to get started, excited to get after the day. And as people hop on, first let me know if you can hear me. But then I have an icebreaker question for us this morning as we get started. If you could have an endless supply of any food, what would you choose? If you could have an endless supply of any food, what would you choose? I'm curious. I thought about this too, and I, uh, it's a tough decision. It's a tough decision. I love pizza, but it's not the best for my body. Um, I love a lot of things. Would I pick something healthy or would I pick something that I just love to taste, right? Ideally, something that tastes awesome that would just end up being healthy, right? So I'm curious, what would you guys choose if you could have an endless supply of any food, but just one food, what would you choose? An endless supply of any food. Yep, and good morning, everybody that said good morning. Great to see you guys today, too. My mom would have raspberries if she could have an endless supply of any food. Wow, okay. Raspberries, that's good. Endless supply of avocados. Wow, I don't think I could eat just avocado. Tenderloin, yeah, I'm with you, Steve. That's a good choice. Coffee. <laughs> Lori will be running around with her endless supply of coffee. Licorice, ooh, that's a good one, Renee. Licorice is good. What else? For those just joining, if you could have an endless supply of any food, but just one food, what would you choose? What would you choose? Mashed potatoes. Nice. Mashed potatoes. I think I'm so far I'm with Steve on the tenderloin. Venison tenderloin, Renee says. That's good. That's good. If you had an endless supply of any food, just one food, what would you choose? Really, Lynn, you'd choose sushi. Okay. I'm not judging. That's awesome. Lauren, apples. <laughs> All right. Apples. Chocolate covered raspberries amidst a bucket of death by chocolate ice cream. Okay. That's creative, Joy. I give you points for that. That's good. Potatoes, apples. Okay. Good. Those are some good answers. Blueberries. I, yeah, blueberries would be up there for me too. So here's our verse for the day. Salmon. Yes, salmon. Now I'm just going to see all these foods and get distracted. Okay. What was the question? The question was if you could have an endless supply of any food, but just one food and you're stuck with it for a while, what would you choose? So we've had some good answers. Oh, that's two for sushi so far. Wow. Okay. Salmon. Yes, that's a few salmons. Salmon would be up there for me too. Fruit. Okay. Here's the verse. Today we're in Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. It says, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. These are words from Moses when Moses was comforting Israel, reminding them that God's presence is constant with them, always with them, even during tough time. So a lot of times as Christians or as pastors, we talk about how God is with us. Right? He's with us in the hard times. He's with us in our sufferings. He's with us in our loneliness. He's with us in our fears He's with us in our uncertainty, in everything. Okay, but not only is he present, but he can relate because he was one of us and he suffered. And so he's not just beside us. This verse says, the Lord himself goes before you. So God is, he's with us okay, and he comforts us, but he's also ahead of us, ahead of us. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He's both. Okay, so he's with us and he's ahead of us. So even though we might face uncharted territory, God knows it like the back of his hand. That's, that's wild when you think about it, right? It's pretty incredible that what's in front of you, God knows it like the back of his hand. It, it kind of reminds me of going into a haunted house. I was 
when I was in, I was, I was a teenager and I was here at Mount Olive as a youth. I was in youth group and Pastor Lance was actually my youth pastor, if, if you didn't know that. So he took us to this place in Marshfield called Nightmare. And Nightmare was a haunted house, but it was all real life situations. There was a room, there was a, like a drug room, there was a, a gang room. There were some really intense situations in Nightmare. And walking in the first time, not knowing what was going to happen, not having anyone in my group that had, had seen it, that was freaky. Right? That, that was difficult. It, it was a comfort to go in with people. They were with us, but nobody knew it was coming. It was a totally different situation when I went another time and someone had already been that year and they knew everything that was going to happen. They were preparing us and they let us in. Right? How much more comforting that was. Maybe you've been in situations like that. But when you have a leader who knows what's in front of you, that's, that's a huge comfort. Okay, So when you're walking into the future blindly, which we all are, and not just during tough times, not just during times right now, Anytime we walk into the future, it's, it's unknown. It's a comfort to know God knows exactly where we're going. And so it doesn't mean it will be easy, but it means we have a leader. And God leads us, but he doesn't leave us in the dust either. And so it's not consistent with his character when you look at Scripture to forsake us, to leave us leaving, feeling high and dry. God doesn't do that when he calls us into waters that are deeper, things that are difficult, more demanding. He's already navigated through those waves, and he's going to lovingly lead us. And so still, we might go through some times, some difficult times, where we don't feel his presence. I think a lot of us Christians can relate to that. We're not always going to feel it as Christians. We're not always going to feel God's presence. But faith isn't just about feeling. Faith is head and heart. So what do we do when we don't feel him? What do we do when we don't feel him? Then we have to trust the head knowledge. Then we have to trust his word, the things that are unchanging, right? The, the heart is changing. Feelings are unchanging. God's word is unchanging. His promises are unchanging. So we trust in those promises. We trust in the word when we don't feel it, maybe when we don't feel God's presence with us, okay? So each day as we step into the unknown, Let's plan to continue to picture God not just with us, but also in front of us, leading us, saying, hey, I know where we're going. Okay, So because God's the one who goes before us, we can rest in his promises. We can be comforted that he's going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us as his people and the sheep of his pasture. So if you would, let's pray. God, we thank you this morning for giving us a place to dwell on your word. Lord, remind us anytime we walk into uncertainty that we walk with you as our leader. And you're not only ever present, but you're all knowing. And we're so blessed to have a God like you who is good, who is for us, with us, and you give us your promises to cling to. So, Lord, when we face challenges, help us to meet our challenges with a confidence that comes only from you. Be with all those today who are facing difficult challenges as we pray that you surround them with your wisdom. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so yesterday was Music Monday. Today is TLC Tuesday, and Pastor Lance has something special to share that we can do. For TLC Tuesday and so I'm gonna grab him really quick and he's gonna tell you what that's about Good morning, church. It's uh, great to be with you here online, and uh, we miss you all very much. Uh, but we know that uh, God is working uh, through all of this for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. Today is TLC Tuesday. TLC stands for Touching Lives for Christ. And it is one of the great blessings in ministry to be able to witness 
church members and followers of Jesus using this time to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so we have received many cards, letters, encouragement, and we want to continue to pass that on to other people. And so we want you to pray about who's that one person today that God is putting on your heart for you to reach out to with care. We are hearing stories such as uh, families who are adopting a senior. And so maybe their next door neighbor is a senior and they're going to the store for that person, or they're just checking in with a phone call or a card um, and thinking about to your doctor, your nurses, your health professional workers, those who are in care facilities or hospitals due to not being able to have visitors, uh, being able to, whether it's send a flower or uh, just a little note of encouragement. But uh, we just wanna think about how can we be the church on TLC Tuesday? And for some, maybe you're thinking that uh, I've been praying for God to put somebody on my heart and I just don't know who that is yet. Continue to pray for that opportunity. And sometimes God answers that prayer by putting an opportunity right in front of you today that you didn't expect. And so we wanna open our eyes and our hearts and our ears uh, to what Jesus is up to today. And uh, we know that he is on the move and we pray that he puts that care ministry opportunity on your heart and in front of you today to show the love of Jesus Christ to others. Have a blessed day church as we go out to be the church today to touch lives for Jesus Christ because he touched our lives through the power of the cross. God's blessings church. We love doing ministry and life with you. God's blessings today.